So I'm here with Harry Knowles, producer of Comic Con Episode 4. Absolutely, uh, great to be here. Documentary. And also Morgan Sprullock, producer, writer, and director of the same film, same title. Yeah. Um, very good documentary. You've both been at Comic Con a number of years, obviously. How hard was it to sort of like uh, come up with the angle that you wanted to take of following like, four or five different participants to the con and sort of their stories? Well, it was, yeah, it was one of the, like, the original idea that we had was, like, kind of telling the story through the, through the participants, you know, and we started putting together a list, you know, yeah. Harry, myself, uh, Jeremy, even Stan and Gil, you know, chimed in, um, and they said, we started just putting together a list, who would we follow, who were the people, what are the, what are the kind of archetypes of Comic-Con attendees, and then from there we just kind of talked about, you know, why, who we should kind of chase, who made the most sense. No, I mean, um, I, I felt very adamant that we get Chuck Rosansky because he was somebody I've known my entire life, and I just knew that he would represent a side of Comic Con that, you know, the others just wouldn't be able to do because he's been to all of them and he's been to the whole history of it. So I felt it was very important to have somebody who, you know, has been there from the very beginning to be a part of the. He represents the, the, represents the old guard. Absolutely, yeah. and then um, Chuck's a great character. He's just a fantastic character. He's got, he's is he's you know he'll be bitter and angry, but at the same time he loves it. He he just revels in it. He you know he loves being at Comic Con. He loves the people. He loves comics so much. Like it's really his life. So yeah. as much as he he may be like a curmudgeon at times, he is just like a fantastic, lovable geek. Absolutely, I mean the other side of it that I thought was just fantastic was looking at all the audition videos for all the different people. I mean because we had people from. All over the world, world. yeah, you know, trying to submit to do this. Probably about, and, we probably got about fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred tapes sent in of people who wanted to be in the film. And it was really pouring over that that you really started to see that there were people that wanted to be, you know, on screen versus people that just had a real story that would interest us and that reached out to us. And the people that we chose, frankly, are the ones that really stood out to us. That's right. You know, there, there were, of course, there were, there were a couple of stories. We ended up following 10 characters into Comic-Con, so there were stories that we ended up having to cut out of the final film. Um, but that's just the nature of making a movie. It's hard. You have to make some hard choices. Absolutely. That could be the sequel, maybe the second part. That's right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, I was going to ask about that. When you decided sort of the different archetypes to pick, was it just sending them out a casting call, send in tapes of these type of people we want to sort of see, and you got that many submissions? Yeah, like we contacted... You know, every comic book shop that we could, every, uh, you know, every, every Facebook listing, every group, Yahoo group, every, uh, every um, cosplay group we could. Um, we just reached out to all of them and blasted out this casting for the, for the con and every mailing list. Like, I think that the folks from the other cons, like, helped us, you know, with their mailing lists, other comic book shops. And it was wide. I mean, it, and we, there were postings. Like, I saw signs up in my local comic book shop in Brooklyn where I live where the, where the owner actually put the sign up for the casting. I mean, it was pretty cool. Well, I mean, even beyond that, like, I remember when uh, we posted the, uh, the feed up on uh, Ain't It Cool That's about right. the casting. Other sites just started mirroring it, and, and, and it just started going viral, and we, uh, I think we had more submissions than we knew what to do with, frankly. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah I, did, I did not predict there would be that many, yeah. but it was, uh, it was incredible. No, Ain't It Cool was a, was a real asset, and having Harry involved, because Harry was really able to blast out the information. It was, to me, it was just a natural, because, I mean, like, if, if you talk to each of the geeks that made it into the film, they almost all read my site, you know, and like when I finally got to meet them up in Toronto, they were like, the second they saw me, it was like, oh my God, it's like it's Comic Con because you're here. And I was just like, <laughs> I'm so touched. I don't go to nearly enough of them to yeah. be declared the soul of Comic Con, but thank you. You know, it was just, they're just such a great group of people. And I mean, the thing, the thing that's really sort of come away from this documentary for me is I've like got established Twitter relationships with everybody in the film now. Yeah. And they all like, send things and they start reacting on my Facebook page and it's just like wow I've like adopted these people to be friends of mine for the rest of my life it looks like you know but is Chuck on Twitter Chuck's not on Twitter <laughs> Chuck is on uh, he is on Facebook and he's in my email okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, now end of our participants obviously wanting to be part of this you are sort of the godfather of the cons let's say when you go there 
But how easy was it to get Comic Con the organization on board? Were they just all for it right off the bat? Were they? Well, no. The thing was, is you know, it started off with a conversation I had with Stan Lee. I randomly met Stan at a at a party one night at at Comic Con, as you do, and I went over to meet him, like to introduce myself, to kiss the ring. You know, I basically went over to say, Mr. Lee, thank you. As a kid, you changed my life. You know, you made me want to tell stories as a kid. And he said, he goes, oh, you know what? We should we should make a documentary together sometime. We should make a documentary about Comic Con. And I was like, that's a great idea, Mr. Lee. That's amazing. And I, I turned around, and it was such this crazy Hollywood moment. Uh, one of my agents from CAA was right behind me, and he goes, how was it meeting Stan? I said, it was great. We want to make a movie about Comic Con. He goes, that's a great idea. You should meet my other client who's coming into town tomorrow. Cut to tomorrow, as I was having breakfast with Joss Whedon. And was saying to him, so, he, and by that point, we'd flushed out, like, here's what we want it to be. We want to follow people in. Here's, like, the idea of the characters that, that we would follow. And Joss was like, I'm in. And then, like, I picked up the phone and called a friend of mine who's on the board of trustees of Comic-Con. And he said, uh, he goes, you know what? I've been here. He's been on the, he's been working with the, with the con for about 24 years now, since he was, like, like 14, 15 years old. And he goes, and over that whole time, he goes, we've probably had two dozen people come trying to make a movie about Comic-Con. And we've always said no. And he said, this time? It just might work, and and it did. It was remarkable, but it did take some convincing. Like they were they were a little wary, but you know I think I think having well, Stan. There was a point about, gosh, I'd say about two months before where it looked like we might not get them on board, yeah. And then it took a lot of like that phone calls to just sort of say, look, you know, we're not here to do a cynical disrobing of Comic Con. We're we're here to really celebrate what it is to be a fan, yeah. and and to be a geek in this modern world, and how this is like geek Mardi Gras and we wanted to show it in that respect where it's not this humiliating thing where everybody's getting pants That's you right. know I mean like yeah. it's not Morgan laughing over everybody it's like we really wanted to reveal the soul of what this thing is and, yeah. and if I, it would have been if it had been me by myself they never would have let me make the film yeah. but it was but it was because of Harry it was Stan it was Joss it was Thomas Toll the CEO of Legendary Pictures you know also an executive producer of the film you know the fact that these guys were on board to produce the movie I think gave it the credibility that, that we needed now, yeah. now, Harry, you're a producer on it, Morgan, you were too. And I looked, and again, there's Thomas is a producer, Joss is a producer. There's about 18 producers yeah. on it. Yeah. But you're the writer. It's, it's a big Hollywood movie. You know, you got to have 18 producers. Yeah. yeah. But I was wondering, because it's sort of, you know, they all were at the con. They've all been there. They all have their own takes and memories and thought processes. Do they want to contribute that or sort of say, we trust you, go with it, you know what to do? You know, we had a lot of conversations in the beginning just about, you know, the characters that we would follow, the stories, you know, what was the film going to be? How did we imagine it? You know, and, and basically, and I, I talked about it. Like, and just as Harry was saying, you know, my thing is that this should be a celebration of what it is to be a geek. You know, it shouldn't be pointing fingers and laughing. You know, I didn't want to make that movie. And so, we, I mean, we had a lot of conversations going into shooting. But then once we were shooting, it was like whoosh, everybody just kind of was gone while we were there going nuts for like a week. And then we came back, started showing people footage, and it was pretty great. Once, uh, uh, very early on in the process, uh, Morgan was talking to me, and he said the word masquerade in a conversation. Like, maybe we could find someone to go to masquerade. And I was just like wow, he knows about Masquerade. That's awesome because I know so many people that just go to Comic-Con that just know Hall H and yeah. that's all that they care about. And to me, it's about all those geeks that work all year long just to be this part of this thing that so many people don't even know about and that that's the purpose to do a Comic-Con doc because so many of the people that go to Comic-Con don't even know what Comic-Con really is and this was our chance to sort of say, hey, you know what, it's a bigger world than even the people that go to Comic-Con even know.